Today, we're gonna break out the hand tools and make this little stool out of wood from my childhood home. And this project comes directly from Nick Offerman's new book. Stick around to see how it's done. Many of you may know Nick Offerman from the TV show Parks and Rec. He's also done lots of movies, lots of theater. He does stand-up comedy, plays guitar, he writes books, and he's a woodworker. And he's got a new book coming out called Good Clean Fun, and we're gonna do a project directly from that book. The book highlights many other woodworkers, including our friend Jimmy Daresta. This is the berry stool, and this chapter contains a stool that Nick made here, and it gives all the dimensions and the how-to. I am using walnut, for the top. This comes from my childhood home. My stepfather cut this down with a chainsaw. And then this piece over here, we're gonna use for the legs. This is willow. Willow isn't typically a good wood to work with for furniture, because it's, it's pretty soft. Uh, it's not known for its beauty, but it's what I have here in the shop. Ideally, I would love to make the whole stool out of walnut, but I'm using what I have here. And so the legs are going to come up through the top, and so there'll be some cool contrast here. So we're gonna get started by knocking off the bark on this stool and then leveling it out. In Nick's book, he's using a wide piece of wood and that centerpiece is coming out of that. I'm actually using the entire girth of the tree here. Instead of making a perfect circle, I think I'm going to leave kind of like the, the live edge feel. So it's close enough to be in a circle. Still got the chainsaw marks all on here. And I thought about leaving that on there, but I think we want a nice smooth top for our booties. You can see it's thin on one side and real thick on the other side. And so we're gonna take a hand plane and Ah, f it. Planing and sanding end grain is definitely a workout, but I finally got it. It's nice and smooth. The underside still has some chainsaw marks in there. I am totally okay with that because I don't want to lose any more thickness and it's not going to be seen. So now let's move on to the legs. So I have the pattern for my leg that I want to get three legs out of this. I think what I'm going to do is, I don't have a good plan because there's some good parts and some bad parts of this piece of wood. And so I'm going to just saw it down the middle here. That way I can at least get it through my planer. Can't get my board to lay flat. I'm gonna tape it down to the sled here. So I lied earlier saying that this wood isn't beautiful. I got some really curly, awesome stuff going on here, which actually doesn't make for good legs because it uh, means it's weak grain, but we're gonna plow through and See what happens anyway. So I've got one side flat now, so I've, I've taken it off my sled and we can plane this down flat. So we have to call an audible here. This is the original template I made for the legs and we couldn't get enough wood out of that board. So I needed to make this a little bit thinner. And since this grain is not real straight, I don't want all this curviness. So I straightened it out a little bit and then made it a little bit more narrow. And now we have enough room to get three legs out of here. So I'm gonna use spray adhesive, attach it to the board and cut it out on the bandsaw. Oh, 61. Long years would I know. We're at 61 Highway. Long years would I know. Don't you run from New York City. So now we're at the part in the book where we need to lay out where the legs are going to go. 
we want to remove all the material here and I'm going to do the bulk of it with a Forstner bit and then we'll use a chisel to square it up. In the book, Nick talks about using a marking knife to mark your lines and what that will do is it will sever the fibers so when you do go to chisel you get a nice clean edge on here and since mine is end grain there's no fibers to sever so I'm just going to go by the pen line that we put on here and go from there. I'm going to put my chisel right up on the line here. And I'm just going to work my way around so I have a nice clean edge. We have the legs here and we're going to cut a kerf in here with a dovetail saw and that will give us a place to put our wedge. Down at the bottom of that kerf I want to drill a hole so I'm going to mark my line here. Know that works. So now we're going to put a rounder over on the leg. I'm using a rasp here and I'm trying to do what Nick's doing here is give it more of a round over at the bottom and less so at the top. And this wood is really soft so it just files away with ease. So now I'm just going to do some final shaping with the sander. All right, time to glue these motherfuckers. <laughs> All, <right. laughs> All right, time to glue in some legs. So now we're gonna glue some wedges in there and then uh, we'll let that dry. This one split on me over here, which is no good. This will not be a stool. What did you want this to be, Eric? A plant stand. A plant stand. <laughs> we'll let that plant stand dry for a little bit. All right, so now we're just gonna flush everything up here with a flush trim saw, and then we'll go ahead and give it a final sanding and put some oil on there for finish. Now we're just going to throw some boiled linseed oil on here. And watch that pop. This is all end grain, so it's going to soak in a ton. So things did not go as planned. I went off script from the book and then used this end grain piece of walnut and it ended up cracking on me. I would not trust anybody to sit on this because of those cracks. So I think my cameraman Eric had a great idea of making us a plant stand. So I think that's, that's what we're going to do. It came out pretty good. The legs, I would not use willow ever again. It is just really soft. I could take my fingernail and make a dent in there. And so I had to redesign the legs a little bit so they weren't so curvy. 
in case somebody did sit on it. But all in all, I think the legs would hold some weight. It's just not a real um, pleasant wood to work with just because it's so soft. I left it kind of rustic. There's a, still a chainsaw mark right here. I, I didn't want to get rid of. It's got cracks all in there, which is all fun. The little wedges look cool in there. Everything on here is end grain except for the wedges. I'm, I'm happy with the way it came out. It's just, unfortunately, it's just cracked. So this would not hold much weight. I could, you know what I could do? I could fix this by putting in a bow tie key in here, uh, which involves carving this out and then carving out a little, a little bow tie out of usually a contrasting wood and sticking it in there to hold that together. I'm not gonna do that. This is gonna be a plant stand. Good idea, Eric. And like I mentioned earlier, this comes from Nick Offerman's new book. This comes out October 18th, 2016. So some of you may know, I have a podcast with Bob Cleggett and Jimmy Daresta. And this week we have Nick Offerman on the show as a guest where he talks about the new book. So I will have a link for you to go listen to that episode. Nick was awesome. He was hilarious. Uh, he's a really good woodworker. He's very passionate about woodworking. He's very passionate about entertainment as well. So I had a good time talking to Nick. If you want to check that out, there'll be a link down below to the Making It podcast with Nick Offerman. How many times did I say Nick Offerman? All right. So um, I will also have links to the book if you want to check out the book. It's really good. Um, you know, you might know Nick as an entertainer, but this is an actual woodworking book. There's a chapter in here on our buddy Jimmy Drasta because Nick and Jimmy have been friends for many years. So really good stuff. Quickly before we go, I want to thank my top three patrons, Nathan Bird, Jonathan Katz Moses, and Renee. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you want to learn how you can support me, visit patreon.com slash I'm talking really fast because I'm trying to talk to you guys before you leave. Don't leave yet because I have this to say. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Come back next week. We'll have a couple more new awesome videos for you. As always, have fun and make something.